Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So as you can see here, we have a little bit of a crappy looking tornado that I did. Uh, hopefully we can make something a little bit better than that, but that's what we're going to be tackling in today's video. All right, guys, so I've got a clear scene now, and first thing we're going to do is bring in a cone. We're going to go ahead and bring in a old cone object, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the mapped texture here. We're going to create that. I don't really know if that's going to make much of a difference for us right now. I can actually get rid of this as well. Forgot to do that. All right. There's probably a number of ways I really wanted to make a tornado out of just particles, but it proves to be uh, rather difficult. Maybe someone else uh, who's more familiar with those types of things can make a tutorial on it or already has. But this is a way I figured you could do it, and it's relatively easy. So uh, we'll figure we'll go ahead and do this one, and maybe later on we'll find a more advanced way to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and rotate this thing about 180 degrees. And then we're going to change the rotation point to zero. Uh, we could actually change it to be a little bit more. We could make it more towards the tip there. But I don't want it to be exactly on the tip. So I'm going to make it about seven. So that way when I center this out, it's going to go into the ground just a bit. And that way you don't have like a tornado coming down to like a perfect little, uh, you know, tip there something like that anyway so i want to go ahead and scale this thing up and i'm going to zoom out so we can see where the clouds are you could bring your clouds in lower so if you're going to do like a stormy scene we're going to go ahead and break them down just a bit maybe yeah i think 750 might be okay and then we're going to also maybe increase the size or maybe decrease them i don't know we could do something to kind of make it look a little bit more stormy we're going to make them thicker or something and we can also change the dang old color. We're going to make some storm clouds here, something like that. There we go. You can watch my uh, weather effects tutorial to get more on those types of things. But for now, we're just going to do this. And we're just going to make it kind of go up there and hit the clouds. Just say about 53. And uh, I don't know if I want it to be that big around. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the X and the Y for me. So I'm going to make that, let's just say 40 and 40. And that way it'll make it kind of a more narrow cone. So there we go. We've got that. I'm going to go ahead and save. And I'm going to get out of my background tab here. In the library, you can go down here to the cone. And you can see that I have the mapped texture thing uh, ticked. Because we did that when I brought it in. And I'm going to go to export map. And what I can do is save this. And then open that up in an image editor. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use GIMP. So uh, I'll see you over there. Alright guys. So here we are in GIMP. And this is our dang old... Thing here so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this make sure we're in here hold control and zoom in with the mouse wheel and what I want to do is actually draw on this I'm gonna probably have to make a new layer so let's go ahead and do that and we're okay with this so we're gonna go to that and with this new layer selected what I want to do is pick a color whoops I didn't come up on the right side there we go <laughs> and uh, what I want to do is bring this up to kind of a a brownish kind of color or something like that. It doesn't really matter. You basically kind of want it to be maybe a brownish gray or something like that. Uh, depends on, you know, what your tornado is made of. Is it made of the clouds? Or is it made of the ground? I don't know. Let's, let's do this. Let's make kind of a grayish one. I don't know. It's probably a bad color, but we'll try it. And uh, I'm going to hit the bracket key and that actually changes the size of the brush here or you can come over here to the size and do that i'm just going to bring it down to one pixel and basically i'm just going to draw like squiggles like this and uh have it just kind of go all over and uh you can pretty much do this however you want it's really up to you i haven't really nailed this down to a science of course i just uh kind of went and played with it and did a little something and saw how it turned out and uh just gonna keep doing this you don't want it to be like too sporadic like, you don't want too many holes in it i would think but you do want it to have some like kind of porousness to it so uh something like that doesn't seem too terrible to me and uh what i want to do is actually hit the r key to get the rectangle tool i'm gonna grab this and drag like this something like that i don't know if that's a hundred percent where we want it we'll try it right about there and we're gonna hit the x key or Control x to delete that and then i'm gonna click to get rid of that selection and then i'm gonna drag over this one the only reason i'm doing this is to try and get rid of seams you don't have to do this step 
but uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V, and then I'm going to grab our Move tool here. And what I want to do actually is kind of transform this, and that tool in GIMP would be, I think, maybe the scale here. Let's just go ahead and move it out. I, uh, not as familiar with GIMP. I did my first version in Photoshop, so I'm kind of having a little bit more difficulty here with GIMP. I should have practiced it with GIMP a little bit, but, uh, anyway, let's see here. Flip tool, this is what we want to do. We're going to do that, and see how that works. There we go. All right, so we've got it flipped. And basically what this does is it makes the left and the right side match each other. You don't have to do this. Like I said, it just kind of helps to get rid of any uh, seams you might have. So there you go. There's your thing there. And, and there's a way to confirm this. <laughs> Dang old thing. Two new layer. There we go. Right click on it. Two new layer. And then now it's actually a thing. Sorry about that. It's a little bit bumpy, but uh, hopefully we can make this work in a bit of a hurry today. So I apologize for uh, the errors. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and make this one invisible. So now we have a transparent background and we only have the little bits that we made there. I'm going to go to file, export as. Remember, don't go to save or save as or any of that stuff. You want to go to export as and then we're going to save this out as a PNG file as per usual. And I'll see you back over in Minimator. All right, so back in Minimator, we're going to go in here to our library. And as you can see, our cone, we're going to go to texture and I'm going to browse. I'm going to find that texture that we saved out of GIMP. As you can see, it's not really the best texture, but we'll go with this just for this example. It's got a little bit too much like solidness in it, I would think, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, so first thing I want to do, I'm just going to go ahead and rename our cone here to, to uh, the tornado, I guess. There we go. We got that. And what I want to do is make it rotate. So it really depends on how long your animation is, but we're just going to go up to say 120 keyframes here or 120 frames. And I'm just going to take this and roll it about a little bit, maybe about negative uh, 900 there. So now what we'll get is dang old spins. And that's pretty good. That's not too bad. So that's kind of, you know, just a rudimentary tornado there. Not a whole lot going on with it. But we can also adjust some things. We could go over here and blur the texture. That can kind of give you some results, but it also can introduce seams, as you can see there. So I kind of recommend not doing that. Depends on how fast you have it spinning and whatnot. But uh, you can go affected by wind and kind of have it do this. So while it spins, it kind of moves around a bit. And then you can go into the background and adjust that. I covered that in other tutorials. But uh, for now, we're just going to do this with nothing extra going on. You can also do the show back faces, but... I kind of had some trouble with that showing a seam. I don't know if it'll do it with this one in particular, but we'll, you know, maybe mess with that in a little bit. All right, so now that we've got the spin on it, what I'm going to do is duplicate this and then parent it to the tornado here. And then we want to get rid of the like, scaling on it and the rotation because it's inheriting all that stuff as well. So what I'm going to do is dang old, I'll probably leave all this like this and then we want to scale it down a bit. Let's just say we want this one to be like 0.9. 0.9 and then we're going to duplicate this one and do like 0 0.8 0 0.8 it really depends on how many layers you want to it but we're just going to go with a few for now just as this example here so then what you get when you watch this is like oh i forgot <laughs> sorry about that uh, i should have been doing that for all of the uh the dang old keyframes whoops let me fix that real quick and i'll be right back all right guys so what i did is i had to go here and click this button here to select all keyframes and then adjust the scale because it was actually adjusting it only for the one keyframe and that was kind of a, a bit of a problem there so uh, what we also want to do now is go in here to the main one and we want to adjust the render depth i'm just going to make it something random like 10 and then that way we can hopefully see the other ones i'm going to make these like nine select all of them please there we go eight and then seven, something like that. Because you want to be able to see the other layers in there. Sometimes if you don't adjust the render depth, you'll have problems seeing that. Another issue I'm noticing here for some reason, they don't want to spin. I don't know why this is the case here. Maybe I need to have it go farther around or something. Let's see what that does for us. Yeah, you can have them kind of churn in other directions and things like that. Uh, if I go ahead and zero this out on these, that might be what the problem is. So now they're all spinning in unison. And what I can do, you can either have it spin in a different direction or make it go faster or slower or something like that. Yeah, it's really up to you how you want to do it. Something like so. 
and then you get this like multi-layered tornado kind of cyclone thing this really looks horrible my other example is actually better but uh hopefully you get the idea here and uh you can have multiple levels of the depth to your tornado and you can actually change the color of them and whatnot if you have multiple keyframes make sure you do this to select all the keyframes on that timeline and you can bring up the mix color and change it to different colors if you want to and all sorts of different things as you can see there that one's turned another weird red color <laughs> if we want to do something like that and uh, just do this so we can kind of identify each layer in there hopefully and stuff something like that and so again if you had a better texture uh, if I can make something better I'll include one in the download but uh, yeah we'll just go with this so there's basically how you could create a tornado and again you can turn on the affected by wind thing on this in order to give it a little bit more life not affected by biome affected by no not that one either affected by wind there we go and you get this kind of like more uh unusual look you know it kind of, kind of makes it look like it's a little bit ununiform, which is probably what you would want you just have to be careful when you go up to different levels of uh movement here if i turn up the strength you'll get this weirdness going on here so you mostly would affect the speed or something uh, but generally the default is more or less okay. I think I brought mine up to 40%. You can do something like that, and then you may have to adjust that for all of these if you didn't have it set in the beginning. Oh, all right, so like the final little step we're gonna do here is bring in a particle system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and create, and then I'm gonna parent it to the tornado, and I actually already made a uh, preset for this, so I'll probably try to include that in the downloads in the description if you want it for yourself. We're going to come over here to our particle editor. You select it in your library, go to open editor, and in here you'll have this little folder. If I click on that, then you go to your particle presets here, and I have tornado debris. I'm going to open that, and then as you can see here, it dang old brings it in. And what I want to do is go ahead and set a keyframe, and I'm going to bring it up and kind of match the size of the tornado just a tad something like that and uh, what I typically do what I did with the other one anyway is let's go over here to the particles we're gonna go to particle and we're gonna make the attractor the actual particle creator we're gonna leave the force at one and then over here in the particle like the editor here where you can actually adjust the particle we're gonna go here I actually used the smoke preset to make this and then modified it a bit you come down here and orbit attractor will be on and you'll see that what you get is this kind of like, you know, debris flying around the tornado and stuff like that happening. So that kind of adds a whole nother level of realism. You could add another particle down here at the bottom. I'm not really sure. I hadn't really uh, figured that out yet. Like I said, unfortunately, I'm in a hurry today, so I didn't have enough time to do what I needed to do to make this work. But you could add another particle system to create like dust to be around the base of it, like where it's kicking up everything. But uh, maybe you guys can experiment with that and come up with something cool on your own with uh, the help of maybe some of my other tutorials as well as this one. Maybe, hopefully. Anyway, that's pretty much it guys. That's a dang old tornado and it looks gross and weird because the texture is horrible and I also made it a tie-dye tornado. So that's cool. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Sorry about the rush job and everything. Sorry about some of the hitches and whatnot. But like I said, kind of been busy lately. Don't have a lot of time. Wanted to get this done for you guys because it was requested by someone. So that's going to be it, guys. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful in some way. I hope it inspired you at the very least to do something even better than this. But anyway, that's going to be it for me. So thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to become a citizen today. Share it with your friends, your family, and your pets, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.